Hello folks, Professor Fiore here, and today we are going to talk about techniques for measuring slew rate and op amp circuits. First, a little review about slew rate. Slew rate is output referred, meaning it is the maximum rate of change of output voltage or load voltage with respect to time. Typically, the measurement unit for this is volts per microsecond, although sometimes in very fast circuits, it'll be given in volts per nanosecond. Important to remember that slew rate, because it's output referred, is not a function of the gain of the amplifier or the size of its input signal. We can measure it with a simple two cursor technique where we just find the differential between the voltage and the time. This is a straight line that we're going to get. So it's a very straightforward sort of measurement that we can take. Typically you would do this in lab, um, you know, with a digital scope, you'd have your cursors move around. I'm gonna essentially do the same thing here in TINA. And a final thing to remember, a practical tip when it comes to measuring these things in lab, if you have a high gain circuit in particular, although this can happen in low gain circuits, you have to watch for a rise time effect. So particularly in high gain circuits where the F2 is not particularly large, the rise time can be slower than what you would get from slewing. So in order to do that right, you have to make sure that the amplifier is in fact going into a slew induced state. Okay, now there is another video that I have that covers uh, the effect of uh, slewing on sine waves that's uh, also looking at um, you know, the effect of gain bandwidth product. What we're going to do here is really focus not so much on that, but we're going to focus on the measurement part. And the easy way to measure is with the use of a square wave. So we're going to jump right over to that. I have a little 741 circuit here. This happens to be a uh, you know, non-inverting amplifier, but slew rate is an issue whether it's an inverting amplifier or not in, a non-inverting amplifier, a summing amplifier, you know, any of those things. Um, you still have to uh, deal with this, this limit in terms of output speed. So this is set up for a gain of 10, right? We got an RF of 9K and an RI of 1K. So 9K over 1K plus one. You know, I like to use round numbers. Why use something weird? You know, if you're just gonna put this down on paper or on the computer, right? Something you can do in your head. Make it easy for yourself. So we have a one volt peak, one kilohertz square wave. Now in TINA, you can come in here and you know set the specifics for the square wave. And what I have is a very fast square wave. Rise and fall time is only one nanosecond, right? So it's not impossibly fast, but it's pretty quick compared to your average run of the mill, uh, you know, little op amp circuit, all right? So what we should get would be a 10 volt peak, one kilohertz square at the output, right? Our input times the gain of 10. So we'll do a little transient analysis on this and we'll see what we get, all right? So I'm gonna run from two to four milliseconds. We should see two cycles and I'm going to include the excitation, in other words, the input signal. And let's bring this over here and expand it so we can see it a little better. All right, get our legend. So the small green is the input signal, right, our little square wave our one volt peak square wave, and then the output is in fact a 10 volt square wave. Now, look carefully at these edges. You will notice that the input is very fast. It's you know basically vertical as drawn on this, on this display here, but there is a notable angle. It's pretty steep, but there is still an angle um, on the output, right? This is slew induced, right? We've, we've got an input signal that if you just took this and multiplied it by a gain of 10, you know, it would be almost vertical. There's clearly something going on here and we can come in and you know, zoom in and you know, take a closer look at this. So this is the same kind of function you would use on your scope. You know, you zoom in on this. So what we would do to measure this rate of change, you know, it's very obvious now what's happening as far as the speed change, right? So just coming up like so. So I'm gonna grab a couple of cursors Stick them on here. This is a straight line, right? This segment right here is a straight line. So I can grab really any two points along here. 
and I'm going to look for the, the change in x, right? And uh, Tina, the x in this case is the time, and the y is the voltage, right? So I want to get this in volts per microsecond. So, yeah, it's a straight line. I can use pretty much any two points I want, and I might as well just grab something convenient over here. Now, a 741 you know, is specced for about half a volt per microsecond. Okay, so I just move this around, and we've got about a 10-volt change, nearly a 10-volt change, in about 20 microseconds. So if you divide that out, that will work out to just about, you know, not exactly, but just about uh, half a volt per microsecond. So that's looking pretty good. All right. So far, so good. All right. Let's get rid of this. Clean this up a little bit. Bring it back to its original state. All right. Now, we turn around and we get ourselves uh, maybe a faster op amp. All right. So I'm going to come in here and change our 741 to a TL081, which is a bifet. And this thing is specced at a maximum slew rate of 13 volts per microsecond, or 13 million, this is why it says 13 meg, 13 million volts per second, right? We we do not put it in volts per second. This is, like I said, 99% of the time it's given volts per microsecond. Right? Sounds impressive, though, if you say it's 13 million volts per second, right? It's that per second that'll get you. All right, so let's let's redo this one, Okay. Do that same transient analysis and see what the difference is. All right, so we can see on this, yeah, this is looking pretty nice, straight up and down. All right, go back to the original. There's a, our input in green, and there's the output, clearly slewed with the 741. And the uh, 081, like I said, is about 25 times faster, so looking really good. Now, you, if you try to measure this using this, the uh, uh, technique that I just did with the cursors, you don't really have a lot of data here. So, you know, trying to get good accuracy is tough. In lab, the same thing is going to happen. So what do you do? You know, in lab, you know, if you have a high, uh, high data acquisition scope, it's, it's going to be looking a little nicer than this. But um, what you can do, first of all, is speed up your input signal, right? So that as a percentage, this piece of it, this nearly vertical piece, is a much larger percentage. So what I am going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. All right, now the amplitude I'm going to leave the same. So I still expect to see this um, you know, 10 volt peak coming out of here. All right, so I'm going to do another transient analysis and we're going to see what happens. Of course, because we're coming in at a faster rate, I don't want to see you know, 20 uh, cycles out here. So I'm going to change my termination, my end of the simulation to 2.2 milliseconds. Boom. All right, so now we can actually see this time base is 10 times faster. We can actually see there is a bit of an edge here. All right, so here's what we had at the lower frequency, and I can compare it to the 741 at 1 kilohertz, all right, and here's the 081 at 10 kilohertz, all right? So it's actually a little bit faster. But at least this thing, we, we have enough data we could actually zoom in on it and uh, you know, try to try to get a, a decent value, right? So here's this nice straight piece. And once again, I'll grab a couple of cursors, put them on here. All righty. And again, we'll just move them around um, and try to find something that looks halfway decent, right? Convenient. All right. So here's a. This is about. Well, let me move this down here just a little bit more so I get into the good part of that curve. All right, so that's uh, about a, just about a microsecond that we're seeing. And this is uh, about 12.3 volts, right? So this is spec at approximately 13. Um, and there we are, 12.3. Okay, so that looks good. Happy, happy, joy, joy, right? Okay, now, for the thing that can bite you, all right? This happens in the lab a lot. People work on this. Um, if you have a high gain amplifier, remember the trade-off between gain and F2, the upper break frequency. If you have a high gain amplifier, that means you have a smaller value, a lower value for F2, the upper break frequency. 
And there is a relationship between the F2 and the rise time. Rise time of square waves gives you a clue into what the F2 is. Matter of fact, in the text I indicate, I go through a little proof that shows that it's roughly 0.35 over rise time will give you a good approximation uh, for your F2, assuming you have a, a single dominant pole in the network, a single lag network that's, uh, that's dominant. Okay, so, you know, if you, if you have a smaller F2, a narrower bandwidth, the output is slower in terms of uh, the rise time. The rise time and fall time is going to be bigger. Okay, so let's move along to the same basic circuit but now I've jumped up RF to 99K. So instead of a gain of 10, this thing has a gain of 100. So the F2 has been brought down by a factor of 10. Now this is about a three megahertz device. So, you know, initially with a gain of 10, we were looking at a bandwidth of about 300 kilohertz, upper break and F2 of about 300K. Now it's only about 30, right? 30, 35, somewhere in that vicinity. Now to compensate, I've reduced my input signal to one tenth of a volt peak. Still at 10 kilohertz though. All right, still what I had over here, okay? So, you know, I'm, I'm going in here and I'm gonna do my, my, my same kind of, uh, you know, measurement, at least I'm hoping to make that same kind of measurement. Get out my, my, my two cursors here, right? Figure out my, uh, my, my delta V and my delta T, all right? Okay, so let's, let's do that transient analysis and see what we come up with. Hey, what the heck is this? Notice the big curvy bits here, all right? These big curvy bits. This amplifier is not slewing. What we're really seeing, this is the telltale sort of signature, if you will, the look of rise time, fall time, right? It's an exponential rise fall effect that you're seeing here. If you try to measure this for slew rate, you're gonna get a crazy result, right? And the earlier examples the amplifier bandwidth was fast enough, right? The circuit was fast enough, the, bit, the F2 was high enough that you didn't really see this. The, the slew rate was the speed limiter in this case. Now it's not the, the, um, uh, the limiter, it is this bandwidth that's the problem. So how do I get an accurate value? Well, you have to force this thing, you have to force the op amp to go into um, uh, in, into slewing, right? How do you do that? Well, you know, yeah, I'm not going to go back and, and try to change the gain because the whole point of this was, was to investigate a high gain amplifier, you know, an amplifier with, that doesn't have a very high F2. Um, so how do we verify it? Well, you force it basically by throwing in a larger input signal. In other words, make the thing clip. Just, you know, it, it's like if you were trying to find the amplifier's clipping level. Just put in a big signal and it'll clip, okay? So, you know, in the earlier uh, video I was alluding to, um, you know, we were using sine waves and you would increase it and you can see the, the distortion, the slewing induced distortion get worse and worse and worse. Um, here, we're just, we're just kind of taking a hammer to the, to the darn thing. And, uh, you know, we're just gonna put in a big square wave and just say, boom, let's see what happens, okay? You're, you're sort of, you know, forcing the situation. Right. Okay, so I've got this increase in my input and let's do a transient analysis. Boom, all right, that's a little bit different, huh? Notice we're coming right up to clipping. You know, this is a 15 volt power supply, so we expect clipping to be somewhere in the 13, 14 volt range. So there's 10, there's 15 right there, 14, 13. So you know, we're, we're hitting saturation as expected. But notice we have a nice big, um, flat and much, much faster edge, right? This is what we have. Forget the little DC offset. Um, here, like I said, this is rise time effect. This is not slewing effect. This is all slewing effect, right? It's kind of the, the giveaway really is sort of these hard edges that you see these corners, right? When you see that, you know, okay, we are definitely going into that uh, slewing issue. All right, so now I can zoom in here. There it is, look at that, nice and straight. Again, here's your input. This was only a one nanosecond rise time. So this thing is nice and straight. Let me get a couple of probes on here, a couple of cursors rather. 
All right, and like I said, you know, on a digital scope, this is exactly what you would do. You'd get your, your uh, cursors and move them around. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'll just do this so I get one microsecond because it's a straight line, so it doesn't really matter which two points I grab. So there's a, a microsecond, there's 13 volts. Boom. Spot on, just what we were expecting. All right, this thing is in hard slewing right now. Okay. All right, so, you know, just to kind of backtrack here a little bit, if you're going to do this in lab, you've got your scope, uh, make sure that you can zoom in far enough that might require you to in increase this input. Use a square wave because you're going to get a nice edge on it, and that's what you're looking for, right? You're trying to find a speed limit on this thing. So, you know, let's, let's sort of go for it, right? If it's a high-gain amplifier or, conversely, an amplifier with a, a fairly low uh, gain bandwidth product, either case, um, you know, we have, we have to be aware, we have to be cognizant of this rise time effect. And, you know, again, that, that whole rise time thing, the giveaway here is this sort of big curvy thing. You know, it's essentially what you see with, you know, capacitor um, charge-discharge waveforms. It literally is the same thing because it's caused by, right, typically internal Miller capacitor in here. So it's the same thing. It's, you know, there's a current source in the, in the preceding stage. It saturates, you get maximum current, feeds this Miller capacitor, and you get the same kind of charge-discharge effect, okay, um, when you're going into slewing, that is. Otherwise, you know, this is not slewing, you, you get that same sort of RC effect that you would have seen in, you know, an AC circuits class. You put a square or a step function into an RC circuit, you get this kind of waveform. All right, so you see it, you know that you're not actually going into slewing. The amplifier is not actually slowing. So just crank up that input, right? Go reach over to your function generator and crank that thing up until you get that nice sort of square that we saw, right? And just to zoom back out to, um, you know, where we were, right, you'll see a nice square. Now, if you go a little too fast, this is going to look like a triangle wave, which isn't a huge problem as far as doing this measurement. Because all you really want to do is make sure that we have a nice straight side here. So if it, you know, if you did go a little too high with the frequency, and uh, you know you wound up with this sort of triangle wave, that's not going to prevent you from doing a, a decent measurement, right? I would say just back it off, just so that you know you're, you know, you're getting sort of this sort of square wave. You don't really want to have a, I don't know, a trapezoid out here, right? You want something that looks square-ish, but you got out your um, your cursors and you set them up and uh, like I said it's a straight line so any two convenient points and off you go. Now in the old days or if you have an old style analog scope that you're using then you have to measure that time using the grid on the scope right so usually you know you you have um, a, a grid that's in centimeters and it'll be you know a, a microsecond per, per centimeter or you know a volt per centimeter going up and down so you just have to read the um, you know, two convenient points on there on the grid, it's not quite as accurate. It's not quite as nice as having these, these uh, you know, cursors that you can move around. Um, but you can still do it, right? You, you just do need to zoom in a little bit on the, um, on the edge, on the waveform, so that you can, you can accurately determine what the slope is. Okay? Beauty. Well, I hope that helps you in the practical measurement of determining slew rate. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And until next time, this is Professor Fiori saying, have a good one.